Hey everybody, John Paul here from JP Enterprises. And what I want to talk about right now a little bit is loading the 9mm in particular for these PCCs. Uh, a lot of people are just shooting factory and I can understand that because the availability of primers and the price of these primers, well, uh, it's almost hard to justify loading when uh, you can buy factory ammunition. Uh, the factory, price of factory ammunition actually has come down a bit. But regardless, a lot of people are loading, and especially if you're looking for a particular edge of the performance envelope. Uh, I do a lot of loading, and I think in particular for a steel challenge, let's say, where people want to load, say, sub-minor power factor, that's where uh, loading really is still probably beneficial. Uh, what we're going to talk about is the application of propellants relative to the type of projectiles you use. and. Uh, uh, there's some nuances there that a lot of people don't get, especially if you're just coming into the shooting world and the, and the loading world in particular. I got some samples of bullets here that I actually load. Uh, we got a 147 blue bullet here, which is a polymer coated lead bullet. And here we have Hornaday 124 HAPs. And over here we got uh, Montana Gold 147, which is a total metal jacket. You see it's got no exposed lead in the base here and that would be a kind of a premium 147 jacketed bullet. So uh, why do I choose uh, between these, these bullets? Well obviously the, the big advantage of these things is cost. They cost considerably less than true jacketed bullets. And actually you can get some pretty good performance in terms of accuracy out of them. I shoot a lot of the 135s, these are the 147s. Uh, if you want to get optimal accuracy out of your pistols or these PCCs, you cannot go wrong with these 124 halves or a, a bullet similar to that. In other words, a jacketed hollow point, something that's got a hollow point in the front here, total jacketed in the back. Uh, this, this really precise base here that it comes from forming the bullets in that way gives them the accuracy that you, uh, that you get out of them. Uh, in fact, if you look at people shooting the uh, Bianchi Cup competition, these 124 Hornaday XTPs or HAPs probably been one of the most popular bullets for that venue because of the accuracy level that you can get out of them. Now here's where people kind of fall into a, uh, a problem area here is they may look at a loading manual and it may give you a, a, a load recommendation say for a 147 jacket a bullet uh, or a 147 lead if you're looking and actually it's harder to find data on these you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants but where people get into trouble is assuming that they can interchange the same load data that they might be using on these lead polymer lubricated bullets with these jacket of bullets and that will get you into trouble. That's the recipe for a squib for sure. The thing you got to know is that these new polymer coated bullets have very very low resistance <coughs> in the bore so it takes very little uh, they're very little to get them moving down the bore beyond the inertia of rest of the mass of the projectile. Whereas you get into true jacket of bullets, they have a much higher initial resistance in the bore. In other words, for them to engrave and take the rifling and get that initial movement on them. Once they're engraved in the bore, of course, uh, and you've overcome that initial resistance, they're going to exhilarate very quickly. But you've got that initial moment where they're engraving in the bore. And that is what determines whether or not the powder charge was going to work with one versus the other. So with these lead bullets, I prefer some of the fastest burning powders, like bullseye, still one of my favorite. A lot of people think that bullseye smokes. It's not the, it's not the powder that's giving you the smoke. It's because it was typically used for cast lead bullets with lubricant wax lubes, and it's the, it's the lubricant, the wax lube, that caused the, the powder to smoke. You're actually burning that wax off, so the powder is not so smoky. It's really the application that it was used for with these traditional cast bullets that had, had wax in the lube rings on the bullets. These really don't do that. That's the beauty of these things. It's kind of the best of all worlds. They give you the cost of the lead bullet, but yet you don't have the smoke that was related to having those old wax lubes that were put onto the old cast type bullets. So these faster burning powders cause a very immediate pressure spike and get these things moving nicely down the barrel and because of the, the, the internal ballistic characteristics of these faster burning powders, for example like bullseye which is one of the fastest burning powders, uh, you don't have an issue with the bullet stopping mid-barrel. 
because of the low bore resistance. But let's say that you run this same charge. I'm actually running about 2.9 grains of bullseye with, with this projectile here. If I put that same charge behind one of these 147 true jacket of bullets, I can guarantee you that thing is going to make it about halfway down the barrel and it's going to stop. And we've seen a lot of that in the past, less so now because people are kind of becoming aware of that problem and they've adjusted their, their loading to compensate. But for a while there, I'd say we were seeing a barrel come in here about once a month, which is bullets stacked into it for this reason, whereas a guy had a particular load with a relatively fast burning powder that was just making minor out of a five inch pistol and found out that, nope, that bullet's not even gonna make it out of a 14 and a half or a 16 inch rifle or a carbine barrel because it just runs out of poop. In particular, on blowback nines, which most nines out there are still blowback. And the problem with a blowback nine is that as soon as the bolt starts moving and the cartridge loses its seal in the chamber, because that's one of the main jobs of the case itself, the cartridge has to seal the gas into the barrel in the chamber. As soon as it starts moving and that cartridge moves just ever so slightly, breaks its seal, if that bullet has not left the barrel, that's where it's stopping. So medium burn rate powders and much larger charges, say five and a half, six grains relatively, that's about where you are with, with these other bullets. Uh, like HS6 is a good one, I would uh, CFE pistol, those are examples of medium burn rate powders that actually give you a very good pressure curve you know, at minor power factor velocities with these true jacketed bullets. So that keeps you out of the trouble, gives you very good internal ballistics, and by that I mean consistent pressure curves in the barrel, which equates to uh, superior accuracy. As you get into lighter and lighter bullets, uh, like these jacketed 124s or 115s, there again, these medium pow pow burn rate powders are probably the way to go. I would recommend those. And your powder charges are going to increase, again, significantly, because the initial payload, the inertia of rest is lower, and you need a larger charge, kind of counterintuitively, you need, a, need a, lo a larger charge behind those bullets to actually get them moving and get them up to a velocity that's going to make the power factor that you're looking for. So I hope this was somewhat informative in terms of an overview of the different types of projectiles. Uh, let me mention one more type, a really popular projectile out there, which I don't have here, and that's a plated bullet. And the internal ballistic characteristics of plated bullets also is very similar to these polymer coated bullets because you've got a thin layer of copper plating, a copper wash on a very soft lead core. There again, kind of mimicking the same situation with that very, very low bore resistance. And anytime you have that low bore resistance, that's, that's an application where you, you're going to get a better result using a faster burning powder. All right, I hope that was informative and we'll see you at the range.